I think we have to talk. We have to talk about Apple. In my last TechView podcast, I talked about the news about Apple and about their transition from Intel-based to ARM-based platform. And one interesting question that popped up automatically when I heard about it is, will it be able to install an alternative operating system on those ARM-based Mac? Because we all have those iPads in our heads that are basically... Mm, touched it. <laughs> <laughs> basically those appliances so you have a tablet which you can use for whatever Apple intends it to use so if Apple says you are able to write program XYZ you can write program XYZ but you are not allowed to install any other operating system on those tablets at least not without jailbreaking which the term itself says what it is it is a jail that you are in historically apple macintosh computers were not this kind of jail of course you have more or less limits just like in every operating system but when it comes to now let's say being able to run on the silicon, whatever you want to run on it, was possible. So I clearly remember a PowerPC Mac Mini that I bought because I was so interested in Apple and Macintosh back in those days. And it was the first Mac Mini, the first affordable Mac that you could get from Apple. And I thought, why not? So I bought this little Mac. And it worked quite good. I also cut all the different videos and video materials there. And I think this intro that you will see here was originally cut on this Mac Mini. And I'm still using it with the old iMovie version that was maybe a bit ahead of its time. But then one day the time came where this Mac Mini was not feasible to use anymore because it was slow and because yeah, I didn't have a purpose for, for it anymore because I had real other machines <laughs> that I could use that were far superior in terms of performance. And this happens to every computer especially back in the days because computers were like evolving very fast nowadays maybe not you can get away with using a computer that is 12 years old without any big trouble when it comes to just surfing and browsing the web watching some videos and maybe some slight audio and video editing as well at least when it comes to full hd videos just like this one here but i wanted something more so First of all, what I did was I used this Mac Mini as a next cloud, not it was called own cloud back then, own cloud server. So I tried a bit using this little machine as a server that could run almost every day, 24 hours a day. But then at one point the software was not updated. Apple did not update the software and the newest own cloud version did not run anymore. So I had to find an alternative. And gladly, this bootloader is not so locked down in this Mac Mini that I was able to just simply install a Linux-based operating system. Linux distribution. I think it was Debian that I used back then because Debian has a good PowerPC port as well. And this allowed me to install my server, configure my own cloud, and I was able to just use this Mac Mini a few years longer past the actual support date and past the usability of Mac OS itself. Of course, you can just simply still use the Mac OS of the, on the system, but it would be with nowadays, uh, even YouTube would not run smoothly uh, with uh, 480p on this device. Maybe 360p runs smoothly but this is 
the device we are talking about. So it is not very useful when it comes to this. Of course, if you have some specific use cases, just like, for example, audio editing, where you don't have much to edit, just like two, three layers of a normal podcast, it wouldn't be a problem. So you could just simply do this also with the old macOS version. But at one point, it gets too slow and you don't really like it to be so slow if you are accustomed to newer hardware. So you come to think of, what could I do to do something else? And there are some other operating systems that are available for PowerPC that I also tried out on this little Mac Mini machine. And yeah, it's very interesting to use this machine for something useful. But this went away with iPhones and iPads. This tinkering with the machine, learning something new or developing even something new is going away and now also for the Mac computers. It's sad to see actually. Really sad to see because I thought Macintoshs or Macbooks are real computers and with the Intel platform everything opening up you have the addition to install whatever operating system you want. Even Windows can be installed. And even Apple acknowledged this by providing Boot Camp, an official way to install Windows on this Intel Macintosh machines. And Linux, of course, also runs pretty smooth on those. And I also owned a MacBook. And this MacBook also one day did not get any updates more anymore from uh, Apple. So I was not able to install the newest Mac operating system, macOS. But I was able to run and install my own Linux distribution on it and optimizing it and learning something new. How would my operating system run on a Macintosh, on a MacBook? It was one of those plastic MacBooks you might have known. 2011, I think. If I'm not completely mistaken. And yeah, this MacBook also runs pretty nice and pretty fine with Linux. I was able to learn to adapt to optimize my Linux distribution for this MacBook and to hopefully also provide to those people who have such a MacBook but don't get any update anymore a way to use this in a good manner somehow. And this works up until now, I think. Those are real computers. This is what is essential part of a computer, to be able to use it the way you want it to use, to be able to install the software you want to install it, to be able to tinker with it. And this is a contrast to those devices you cannot tinker with. You can only use what Apple allows people to use. And uh, now people would say, yeah, what's wrong with the new ARM MacBooks or Macintosh or Macs in general? Apple is just switching out silicon just like they did with PowerPC. It is a bit different because Apple said officially in various interviews that they don't intend to give the users the possibility to install their own operating system on there. It's not just boot camp and Windows not running there. That's not the big problem. Because Windows on ARM, let's be honest, it's not very pleasant operating system that you want to run there. At least for now. Maybe in a few years you want to and then you don't have the option to. And the same goes for Linux. What happens if Apple someday decides, yeah, we go back to an x86-based operating system or we don't support our first generation of ARM-based or Apple Silicon, how they call it, based mm, Macs. What do we do then? Interesting question. Eh? What do we do if this is not possible anymore? What do we do with those Macs? 
maybe there will be a program by Apple where you can give them back and you have the option to buy a new one. A discount of some sorts. But is this really the best? Is this really what you want? Why can I not just with my Mac Mini G4 use it as my server? Or use it as a little small surf station for my mom or my dad or my sister or someone else who wants just to have a small laptop that has long battery life that is capable of still showing the newest websites but without the risk of running into problems because a t certain technology is not supported anymore because the operating system is not updated. So I would really like to have the option to install a Linux based system on it. With the newest software of course, with the newest update, with the newest security, everything that belongs in to a modern operating system. I'm not able to do this. And this is, I think, the major problem that we will face right now. Apple is destroying their Mac computers. What they are doing is transitioning Mac computers to Mac appliances. They are basically taking the iPad and putting a nice keyboard on it, a trackpad, nice display, and all the accessories or the little ports that they that become even fewer and fewer each day, <laughs> I think, to simulate what a laptop computer is. But the core component of this is the freedom to run whatever you like to run on this computer because it's a general computing device. I want to be the master of my device. I don't want to be the slave. And I fear, even with the freedom that Apple allows you to install virtualization, that allows you to install Linux in a box, basically, on macOS, even with this, it is not a true computational general purpose computing device anymore. And this is what is really sad about this announcement. There is no real plan. And when you take a look at the various different um, answers and uh, interview sessions, it was very clear to me that Apple does not plan any way to install any alternative operating system. Their idea is if you want to have alternatives running, use virtualization. You can run your ARM Linux machine in virtualization, maybe even the Windows ARM version in virtualization. But this is truly a limit. Apple allows only macOS to be run on the device. Either the signed version or even an unsigned version, apparently. But could be that the unsigned version will be fading away as well because this would be maybe a way to hack into the system to simulate we are an unsigned macOS version and in reality we are booting, booting a Linux desktop. But it's not an official way, it's not a very elegant way, it is not a way a computer should work. A computer should allow you to simply install, allow you to install whatever you want on this computer. It should be a general purpose computing device and not limit your stuff. How can IT persons learn new technologies? How, the way that I learned new technology, the way that I learned optimizing my Linux distribution for a Mac. If it is not possible to run it natively directly on the hardware that I want to have without a layer in between. It's a sad day, I would say, when this really comes, becomes reality. So let's hope that Apple will listen to some of its customers and communities to open up, to not have everything blocked, to have 
another way, another path that people can go. And these are people, not the average Joe that just buys a MacBook to surf on the internet a bit. Or to be trendy, to be in, to be cool because owning an app, Apple product. Or to have the infrastructure of Apple, the ecosystem of Apple. It's not about this. It's about those people who want to tinker, who want to try things out, who want to change stuff. And I think those are the ones who build up on the computer industry and Apple should not block them away, should not put them into this shady little corner of the room of jailbreaking, of doing illegal things, illegal things if you hack your device so you are able to run your own software on it. Calling this illegal. Wow. So we will see how it will develop. And it's only one manufacturer, you can say. But it is one that in many ways also leads the technology somewhere. And you can see Microsoft with their ARM devices also more and more blocking everything. You can see all the Android manufacturers on their smartphones blocking more and more stuff. And yeah, I think this Apple announcement without the announcement to say, here, we have this idea and we want to make an open platform where people can install whatever operating system they want to on our product as well. We don't give them any warranty then if you want to install. It's your own risk then. But you have the option to do so. To create some kind of standard in the industry to say, okay, we want to... Or basically, basically the standards are there already. We want to adore those. We want to adopt those standards and create something like the PC, like the x86 PC. The reason why the x86 PC, PC took off is because of all of those standards. It is because they were truly listening. They were truly open. They were truly innovating upon stuff. And this was only possible because every Jack and Joe and Jill and I don't know who could install whatever operating system he wanted, could tinker with the system itself. And this is really important. And I hope that we will see a change of heart maybe at Apple to not only have signed Mac and unsigned Mac, maybe signed, unsigned and other to allow other operating systems to run on their platform as well let's hope we can see this and if you have questions about my little comment right now ask them in the comments section otherwise like and subscribe if you want to listen to something similar more you can find some other videos as well about technology more or less and what do you think is the general purpose computing going the way of distinction? Do we in the future only have appliances that look like a computer looked? Or what is the direction the industry is taking in a few years when we have those devices? You can write all of this down in the comment section. I would really love to read it and discuss stuff with you. That's everything for this little vlog. Until the next time, bye.